if you're obese, you're causing inflammation. And more importantly, obesity, excess fat cells, are the breeding ground for senescent cells that speed up the aging process. Hello and welcome to the Wellness Zone podcast. I'm Mary Perry and I'm joined with Dr. Barry Sears. And each week we talk about the science of wellness metabolism and the dietary pathways to maintain them. Today we're going to, we all know about chronological age, but today we're going to talk about biological age. So Dr. Sears, what exactly is our biological age? Well, our biological age is really how well our body's performing. As you said, we all know our chronological age, but saying as our biological age ages faster, we don't perform well. Now, what we want to do is to basically dissociate biological aging from chronological age, and by that is controlled by our genes. But not in the way you think. <clears throat> the, the genetic code is static. It doesn't do much. What turns on and turns off the genetic code is known as epigenetics, and that's controlled by our metabolism. So the better we control our metabolism, the better we control our rate of aging. So one of the things that comes up around the topic of epigenetics is epigenetic clocks. So can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, this is, uh, in my ways, a kind of a scam. <laughs> in that there is, a, it's how, how old am I biologically? I say, well, we'll use biotechnology. Now these epigenetic clocks uh, look at basically called methylation sites in your DNA. There are 30 million methylation sites in your DNA. However, saying, Thank goodness for artificial intelligence. We'll focus on only 350 of those sites. And from those 350 out of 30 million, we can tell you you're basically your biological age. Sounds great. And only for $395, you can get a test. Say, great, count me in. Well, unfortunately, the tests uh, are based usually on buccal samples, taking a swab from your mouth. But you really need a blood sample. And more importantly, it depends on how you prepare the blood sample. And here's the worst part. It depends on the hour of the day you're taking the blood sample. You can change your biological age by about three to five years, depending if you take your blood sample in the morning or in the evening. Wow. And so they say, well, this is not a very good test to say, <laughs> right. Uh, so, uh, so this might be a little bit more marketing hype is what you're saying. <laughs> oh, would I say that? No, not me. Uh, so, so really, they're not very accurate, would you say? Or just there's too many variables between night and day, time, and how the sample is taken? And just too many variables. And that's why we have, you know, first generation tests, second generation tests, third generation tests. Say so we're making more refining our protocols, our algorithms. Uh, they just aren't working very well. Okay. So if somebody is listening and they're like, hey, what can I, if I can't really take this test to know my biological age, what can I do to impact my epigenetics? Well, the most important way that you impact your uh, epigenetics is by metabolism. That you can control. And, but the more you control that, now you slow down biological aging. But <clears throat> do I need uh, an expensive test using a DNA analysis? No. <clears throat> there are some very simple things you can do today to say, am I aging faster or slower? Number one, are you fat? Oops, big problem for most Americans. Now, we think fatness is defined by BMI. It's not. The actual definition of obesity is excess body fat. And a BMI does not tell you that. And most Americans, like about, oh, 84%, will find out, oh my God, I'm obese. <laughs> right. That means you're aging faster. Now, why would that happen? Because if you're obese, you're causing inflammation. And more importantly, obesity, excess fat cells, are the breeding ground for senescent cells that speed up the aging process. So that's one marker. Uh, you know, you need our test. Just stand stark naked in front of a mirror and say, I don't like what I see. Now, are there other tests which are a little more objective? Yes, these are blood tests. Uh, the most important, I believe, is your levels of insulin resistance. If the insulin resistance is high, you're aging at a faster rate. Another blood test would be the ratio of arachidonic acid to EPA in the blood. That's a marker of inflammation, which is a driver of basically accelerated aging. 
And another blood test <clears throat> is a standard blood test called glycosylate hemoglobin, which gives you an indication of your ability to control blood glucose. So those give you now some very in, in, good, independent, and easily accessible and free uh, blood markers to say, how am I doing in terms of aging? Now, there's other things. We're looking at biological age, but part of that is also how we perform physiologically. So are there markers of physiological aging? Well, yes. One is VO2 max. How, how high of intensity can you do? And that's measuring how efficient your heart is. Another one is your strength. And you can do that and measure it easily using a hand grip. You just grab a little hand grip and basically pull it to see what your ability to pull that uh, weight. And that gives you also a very good indication. So between the blood test, your percent body fat, and a few physical tests, these give you great insights of how to basically slow down the aging process. And they can all be modified by lifestyle. But when we talk about lifestyle, they're not all equal. If I want to really slow down aging, 70% of my ability will come from basically the diet, and in particular, metabolic engineering. About 20% from doing exercise consistently every day, and 5% from stress reduction. They're all good, but they're not all equal. So Dr. Sears, you know, I, what I think is great about this is everyone's like, oh, I was born with these genes. I have all this, you know, this stuff in my, in my history line that says I'm going to have all these different conditions and stuff. But what you're saying here is that you really have the ability through all these markers to change the expression of your genes. So there's something people can do today um, that will change, you know, their longevity in their future. Exactly. And especially insulin resistance. How long does it take to reduce insulin resistance if you're following metabolic engineering? The answer, four days. Great news. Now, here's the bad news. If you stop following metabolic engineering, the insulin resistance will return to its baseline in four days. See, so you mean I have to do this forever? Only if you want to live longer. If you don't want to live longer, do whatever you want to. And, and, you know, another topic we have kind of talked about in the past, too, is where this is really important is prenatal health. So even the mother's diet really can have an impact on future generations, too. So um, for pregnant women, this, this idea of epigenetics and changing the expression of genes really has a huge impact as well. Oh, a dr dramatic one, because basically uh, it's the one time in the, the woman's life when giving, uh, having you know, a fetal birth is saying, I can basically give my child a great advance in their life, or I can take a couple steps back by my diet. So yes, this is what we call transgenerational epigenetics. So again, you want to pay attention because now it's not to your life, it's really the life of the fetus and the quality of life they will have. So again, as every stage of your life, from age minus nine to 102, you want to be practicing basically a good lifestyle to basically dissociate biological aging from chronological aging. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Sue, you talked about, you know, the obesity epidemic and just, you know, overall, how are Americans doing? You know, I know there's, we have a lot of excess body fat and stuff, but you know, your overall impressions of the American population's biological age. Well, it's not my impression. It's the impression of the World Health Organization. Uh, you can use a statistic. It's called health span. This is health span is longevity minus years of disability due to chronic disease. Of the number one ranked country in the world is Singapore. Italy is ranked number 10. And the US, we're ranked 66th. More importantly, since 2010, our health span in America has been decreasing. Mm -hmm. And this and America is the only country in the world only developed country whose health span has been decreasing over the last 15 years. It's a powerful testimony to say how poorly we're doing as a, uh, as a country in terms of basically dissociating biological age from chronological aging. Now, that being said, the good news is if you follow those simple prescriptions of basically eating correctly and doing some exercise and basically try to lead at least a lo lower stressful life, you can change that. Now, do we have the will to do that? I hope so. But if not, basically bad times are coming. 
So Dr. Sears, if people want to learn more about epigenetics and biological aging and just the dietary strategies they can do now to sort of reverse their biological age, uh, where would you tell them to go for more information? I would suggest going to drsears.com. We try to explain the complexity of metabolism. It is complex, but more importantly, to show there's a dietary way to basically alter the metabolism quickly and it can be maintained for a lifetime.